Hi everyone, welcome to the Art Workshop. My name is Christopher Appling. We're so happy you tuned in today. We have a very special episode. Now, many of us are aware, and hopefully you are too, that Pikeville, the city of Pikeville is approaching its bicentennial here this year in 2024. It's 200 years of uh, many, many events, many, many of different things have impacted our, our, our city and our, our region through the city of Pikeville for sure. And today I thought we could honor maybe just a glimpse of that in an art project. So we're going to try to do that together, but remember, the whole point of this show is that you at home draw along with us. So if you want to go ahead and grab some paper and a pencil and maybe a marker, uh, something with a small tip on it, a felt tip or, or a um, ballpoint pen even, that would work. So either way, just grab your materials together. We're going to get started today drawing the historic figure of James Garfield. So when I... First start out the show, I like to talk about materials too, but before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about the background of who we are actually going to be drawing. Now, I've been asked to do the Bicentennial Coloring Book for the City of Pipeville, and in that book, there's many, many different events depicted. We go all the way back to Neolithic, Paleolithic time periods. Before working on this project, I had no idea that in our area, in our region, there were woolly mammoths, saber-toothed tigers. I had no idea that certain hunting parties came down all the way back in Paleolithic time periods using Clovis Point um, spears to, to, to catch these animals and harvest these animals and take them back home. No clue. But since working on this coloring book, I've learned a lot about our city, a lot about our region, a lot about our history. One of the, I guess, most interesting subject matters to me, though, is always stuck out as that of President Garfield. Now, President Garfield, as many of you all know, started really his campaign of uh, becoming a political figure here in the city of Pipeville. He was first, if you want to read the plaque in the park, you can, because it's right there where it happened, commissioned Brigadier General in the Union Army. He became president, was sworn in at that time, though, by Squire Charles of Pike County. This is 1862. Now, the sort of the really sad part about this, the 20th president of the United States, James Garfield, was assassinated. He was shot at the Baltimore and Potomac Railroad Station in Washington, D.C. in 1881. He died in Elburn, New Jersey, 79 days later, and the, ass the assassination of uh, the president would have turned a little bit better had more sanitation been involved in his care. That's the real sad part. He would have lived. So today we're going to try to honor his memory a little bit by drawing together and trying our best to depict this figure of history and one that has so prominently impacted us just from a marker of starting his political campaign here in Pikeville so many, so many years ago. So let's go ahead and start out. Now, here we go. We're going to talk about materials. Now, first thing I need is a subject matter. So over here, I have the picture of James Garfield brought up on my phone. I'm going to have to reference this many times as we go. Now, we're going to draw him in his, in his Union Army um, um, uh, uniform. Um, we're going to be depicting him sitting in a typical stance. Of course, you're going to need a pencil. You're going to need a racer. And then I brought a few different markers here. This is just a regular Sharpie. So if you have a Sharpie at home, you can follow along. Now, what I said earlier, pay attention to the tip, though, because if you have a very broad tip pen, you might have a little hard time doing the detail. But I did bring one for that, too. I brought a brush pen, and then I also brought a very, very large brush pen here which will help get in a lot of the really deep shadows, which we're going to be pulling in in a little bit, of course, uh, through his beard and a few more aspects of his uniform. Now, that's the only materials you need. Pencil, eraser, pen, slash marker. We're going to start out, though, of course, with our pencil. Now, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start to lay out our, um, our drawing. And I want to know, because I have a certain amount of space here that I'm going to draw in, I want to know where certain elements are going to take place. So I'm going to start out by drawing just a simple circle for the head. And you follow along with me. Take your pencil, go around in circles until you get something that resembles an oval towards the top of your page. Okay? Now we're going to, we're going to lay out the entire drawing first before we ever start putting details in. This will be uh, President Garfield's head. So his beard will come down off of this circle just a little bit, so you can draw that on there. Extending downward, past the oval just a little bit. Now, we'll stop there. I'm going to lay out his shoulders. 
So his shoulders are going to come down. So I'm drawing almost like a half oval here, just down off of the first oval that we put on the page. Then one arm will come down this way to the shoulder. And then we have another arm which will extend past the chest. But first we need to know where the chest is. It comes down this way. And then the arm here, it comes down on his lap. Now this is pretty much the basic underdrawing of what we need to really depict this character or this historic figure. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna take my eraser. I'm gonna come back up here. Notice where I placed the beard extending down from the oval. I'm getting rid of this lower portion of this oval that I started out with. We don't need that anymore. Now I have an eraser pen um, all that is is just a stick eraser that is almost works like a mechanical pen would work and you hit the top of it and it pushes more of the eraser out towards the bottom. You don't need something like this to draw with, but it's just what I'm using. I just want to explain what it is. So now you can kind of see how a beard is forming here a little bit. Now we want to see where the center of the face is. The center of Garfield's face comes down like this in the middle up towards the top, his mouth will be somewhere like this, okay? Now we're gonna go back in here now and place where the eyes will be. The eyes will be right here. I like to make marks. The nose will be about here. Now I'm not trying to do a realistic portrait here. I wanna do a representation of the character. So we're not looking to do something so hyper detailed, but we do want this to at least resemble the character we're drawing. Starting where you place the first line, you have three lines, a line, well actually four, one coming down the face, a line where the eyes will go, the nose, and the mouth. Now let's start with a little bit of detail at least. Let's come over to each side of this, and we're gonna form a little bit of an eye here, okay? How I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw a line coming back in this direction, and then a line going out in that direction, both sides, okay? I have two lines drawn. I'm going to form a pupil here. One here. And one here. Just a little circle. And we're, going to, we're going to really detail this out a little bit to make it look a little bit better, but so far that's all we need. Okay? Jumping up just above it, we have an eyebrow. Make a series of hash marks extending back. In that direction, a series of hash marks going over towards the left. This forms the eyebrow. Now the face is not exactly in proportion yet in terms of the side of the head here. He has a very distinct jawline, a very distinct forehead. So we're gonna work on that now. He does not, however, have a unibrow, so we'll get rid of this part. And we're also gonna get rid of this line in a minute too. We don't need it anymore after we've established these bottom lines, okay? But we have the eyes drawn in. Now, come back up to the top of the head up here on the side, and you're gonna draw a line coming up, forming the top of Garfield's head here. Coming down, you're carving out the shape of the head using the oval that you started out with, okay? Drop down, here's where the jawline becomes really distinct. You can see how it curves back in now. And then this is the beard, of course, which is gonna extend down past the chin, across the bottom of the face, and up towards the ear on the right side. For the ear, you're gonna come straight across from where the eyes are, about right here, and you're gonna form the ear. The ear just sits on the side of the head, ever so lightly, draw like a backwards letter C. Okay, now a little detail in the ear won't hurt. A few lines here, coming down to form the lobe, and another for the cartilage in the ear, okay? Now, a little bit with the hair. Since we've already gotten this far with the head, let's keep going. He has a little bit of receding hairline, so we're gonna come up to the top of the head, 
He has a little bit of hair on top of the head here. And we're going to stop. Okay, and we're going to come over to the side. And we're going to form the rest of the hairline coming down, in, and back down. Now that is just for the interior part of the head. We also have to form the hairline coming off of the head, which is at the top here. So you have two lines forming this, right? You have this one coming down, swoops back in, and this one on the side, okay? Now we should have now enough to fill in the hair. Now drawing hair is tricky. Now we're gonna be using a pen later to show highlights, shadows, and when we ink it, it'll come together more but the pencil lines we're making right now are just there to help guide us. We want to see where our lines are going to go. And I'm forming the beard as I'm talking. He does have a mustache. But I'm going to hold off a second on this mustache until I actually can come up here and pull in and draw a little bit of the nose. Okay. Before I work on the nose, remember the line that we drew going down the center of the face? Get rid of this line, except for those hash marks. You drew one for the eyes, one for the nose, and one for the mouth. Leave those there. But let's get rid of the rest of that line, okay? We can also carve out the rest of the side of the head here by erasing some of this oval you no longer need. You can start to see the face taking more form now, okay? Now, for the nose. It's a very distinct nose. Draw a line coming down. And the nose comes down and extends outward and back in. Okay, hope you can see that. So that comes down, curves, and back in. This is where the nostrils will go on each side of the nose. Now that we have the nose, we're in good shape to finish this beard up. We had to have the nose first because we need to know where the mustache will be. Of course, the mustache is directly underneath the nose here, so we're going to continue on down on each side. Now we'll work on the mouth. Now, anytime you're drawing a beard on someone, if you're not trying to be super hyper realistic, you can get away with a few different little techniques. The one that I like to use the most is I form the mustache first. So come back up to the top, form that mustache coming just underneath the nose on both sides like that. And you can see what's already happening here. The mouth is almost forming itself. Just a little drop shadow here for the bottom lip. And then a little bit of hair below it. And you have yourself enough information that the eye will look at that and say, I can see a mouth there. The eyes are okay. We, we started out with these pupils, but we need to shape them up a little bit more. Well, one thing we need, definitely need to do is draw a line at the bottom of the pupil as well. He's almost squinting just a little bit in this drawing. I mean, I'm sorry, photograph. And then he has a few wrinkle lines too, which we'll add in here. Of course, on this side as well. Politics, uh, I imagine, is a very stressful profession. And I don't think it's any different in a lot of ways than what it was 200, well, 150 some years ago or 60 some years ago. but or however long it may have been. I, what was it, 18? I don't remember now. That's how bad it is. I didn't claim to be a history buff, but we're going to draw it. Many years ago, during the Civil War, right? So, so we, have, uh, we have politics that established itself. It has established itself over a millennia, all the way back to you know, your, your um, um, Roman uh, emperors and Caesars and all this other stuff. Politics is, is stressful. So you want to show some lines in the face. That's my point of there being some stress involved with this profession. Even though at this time, he was more of a military person than he was an actual um, full-time politician. But the seeds were being planted at this time for him to go on and do something um, with that for sure. Now let's work on the uniform a little bit here. With the uniform, you have a very distinct pattern of shapes and markers that identify the Union uniform. First thing is the neck guard. This is this black piece of fabric that goes around the neck here. 
The next thing is if we come down on the shoulder a little bit more, you're going to see the rank of whoever it is you're looking at. And that will be sewn in on a patch on the shoulder. In this photograph, he's a Brigadier General. So it's a one star general, right? So we're going to try to put a star in there the best we can. On this side of the body, we don't see the patch so much. It's kind of obscured a little bit from, from our view from his, uh, the way he's sitting. But we're going to trace the line going down his body. And we're going to fill a few more details out about this uniform. The next thing we're going to do is some buttons, a series of buttons. You have one here. Another here. You can see a couple on this side. And the uniform would lay over on itself and then buttoned up. So the line would go down this side of the body towards the belly. And then you have a series of more buttons. There's a series of two buttons. And there's a series of four sets of buttons. So we're going to try to include these the best we can. All right, there we go. So we have two sets. We include another here. All they are just draw circles is all you have to do. You don't have to worry about the detail inside those buttons, which there were, but we're not worried about that yet now. We're doing a cartoon version of this historic figure. Okay? That'll work for now. Now let's jump back over on the shoulder. Coming down this way, you want to put a few more lines in here to help show the flow of fabric. And that's all I'm doing is just inserting some lines. And then at the bottom of this arm, before the hand is seen, there's a cuff here. Okay? We'll, we'll worry about the hand more in a minute. But let's jump back over now to his left arm. There's a break here in the fabric. Then we have more uniform to draw. Down to this shoulder, and then going down, okay? Now this is gonna be, all this will be inked. So as I'm putting in these pencil lines, I'm keeping in mind that in a minute, I'm going back over this with a pen. And I'm going to um, basically really, really have the details stick out more and more as I work with the drawing. This will all be black, so I'm letting myself know that by just sketching that in a little bit darker. And then, of course, you'll see a bit of his hand here, and you're going to see a little bit of a hand here. Now, let's work a little bit more at the top of the drawing, jumping back up to the head here, okay? Now, I kind of like what we've done so far. It's looking like, looking like we're getting somewhere with it. I'm going to shape this beard up a little bit more. His face looks a little bent towards the right too much for me, so I'm going to carve a little bit more off, something like that. And I may actually carve a little bit more off the side of the head here too. You're always refining this. this that's the part of this process is that you, you start out with a general idea of what you want, and as you draw, you find, well, I like this more or that, and then... You know, if this isn't working, let's just try this again. So we're going to shape that up a little bit more up here at the top. There we go. See a little bit of hair on this side of the head. That's what I was missing. There we go. Now, we've gotten ourselves to position right now where we're just adding details such as lines of fabric, bending from how the uh, general sitting, and that sort of thing. Just a little more detail. So all throughout your drawing, you can add a few more little tiny bits of detail. Showing fabric's difficult, but if you remember to just make shapes like this over and over, and then color in or darken in in between a little bit like that, you'll be fine. It kind of looks like a fish hook, and then darken it in a little bit. It's amazing what the eye will do and fill in for your mind whenever you start placing shadow in and, and, and showing where you, where you want the, the viewer to see um, depictions of light and dark. Uh, the eye will fill in a lot for you. All right, I'm going to erase a little bit more, just here at the bottom of the beard. 
And once I do that, that's going to start the process then of inking this drawing. And I want to talk a little bit about how I do that. Oftentimes I'll get through it pretty fast and I don't talk about the details of this. Now, I brought in a lot of different pens as you saw. Um, one pen I want to start out with is this brush pen. Now the brush pen has a really nice variation of line width, line width. So you can start out very thin and as you push down, you see how that line just gets really, really thick and then goes back to thin again. And that's what you want to see a little bit, especially when working with um, the curves of the skin and the flow of the body. So I'm going to trace over my lines now that I made very deliberately tracing over. Some of these will be thicker lines than others. And I'm going to go over every little detail of this drawing using these different pins. And I do need all these pins, believe it or not. So not just one pin is going to work. I need all of them. Now another thing the brush pen is really good for is doing lines like this for eyebrows. So we're going to go back this way, a little thicker here, a little thinner there. And of course, getting in there and getting those details of those eyes. Now, I want to be careful because there's some parts of this you do not want to work with a brush with yet. In fact, what you want to do is hold off a minute and use the smaller, the pens that you have a little bit of smaller nib to or a little bit smaller felt tip with, okay? The hair at the top. Go like over here. A little bit of hair on the top of the head. And then down the side of the head here. Now after we're done, this ink will dry and we should be able to come back in, erase all this, and really see all the detail we've placed in. Now, Garfield, the best I could tell, had sandy brown hair. So we don't want to make it too, too dark with our ink, but we do want to show the shadows in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start out doing a series of lines like this, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And notice I didn't color it all in. I stopped. I'm only working in stages here, okay? And it'll really make sense or more sense here in a minute once we get to a race. His beard is very well groomed, so he's going to have a very straight line going up to the top of the sideburns. And then below the mustache here. Now I'm using this brush pen quite heavily. But here in a minute I'm going to shift gears. And we're going to start using a, a smaller nib. All right, down the side of the face here. Forming the beard. All the way back over on this side. And here in a little bit, we'll come back in and put some more detail of hair in there too. But now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I really want to take advantage of the time with this pen and I want to get this fabric because these brush pens are great for fabric. Because remember that shape that I drew a minute ago for you and showed you how to do it? And well, that's what you want. You want a lot of those patterns. And these pens really can pull out the, the look of these patterns here for you. So you, stick, you kind of press down and let up, press down, let up. Make a few of these shapes in here, down this way, let up, down, making these curves in the patterns of the fabric. Down to the cuff. Now we'll work on the cuff getting that darker in a second, but let's jump over here to the side now, get down this shoulder. I'm letting up on it a little bit here and there. Pressing down harder in some places, lighter in others. And really it's up to you where you do that at. There's no paint by numbers to this. Um, you can watch me as I do it. And hopefully if you do, you'll draw along at home and you want to share it. That'd be great. But just remember that you 
um, however you do your version of this, it's perfectly fine. There's no paint by numbers to it. It's just taking sort of hints and tips uh, from my techniques and then implement it into your own. And if you want to share with us, we'd love to see it, by the way. You can send that to us really easy. It's piketv99 at gmail.com. I'll repeat that again at the end of the show, but let's say you draw along with us and you want to share what you've done. We'd love to see it, and we'd love to share it here on the show. Remember, piketv99 at gmail.com. Because the whole purpose of this show is for you to draw along with us and have fun at home and then share it. That's what we want. And for me to get really nervous when I'm trying to work with a historical figure like James <laughs> Garfield here. Because uh, you don't want to botch it too bad. It's not going to look exactly like him, but because we're doing a cartoon version. That's how I get away with saying, you know, hey, look, it's not going to look like him exactly. It's a cartoon, right? All right. So now let's go in and grab our, I think I'm going to use the Sharpie. Let's see how, yeah. We're going to use the Sharpie for the eyeballs. Now this is a really, really thin tip marker, okay? So that means that, of course, I can get in and get more detail done. The brush pen, doing this with a brush pen would be a little bit of a nightmare. Because that brush pen is going to take up a lot of real estate. It's going to eat up everything that we put it down on, even if you try to push down very lightly, because it's just, that's the way the pen's made. It's made to block in more areas. And we don't really want to have black eyes on Garfield. We want to, we want to at least depict a little bit of emotion here in the eyes if we can, right? Now in Art 2, there's this technique called cross-hatching, which I've went over before many, many times on the show. And in fact, if you want to see entire episodes dedicated to cross-hatching, you can. You can check out an entire archive of all those if you go to our YouTube channel. It's Pike TV 99 on YouTube. Click on the playlist and bring up the Art Workshop. And in those, you'll find things about all sorts of different techniques, one of those being cross-hatching. So with cross-hatching in art, it's when you shadow in something using a series of parallel lines like this, okay, and then you go back across it in the opposite direction like that. That's all it is, like a checkerboard pattern. Now, the closer you make those together, the more shadow you're going to see. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a little bit of cross-hatching. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. We're going to appear at the top of the head. We're going to do a few lines coming up. And then back this way. And then a little bit here underneath the jawline. The nose. And then over here on this side, we may see a little bit of jawline here. And then now we can work with the beard. Cross-hatching this beard is fun because you don't have to stay in any set pattern. You can jump all over the beard if you want, but be sure and try at least to get the bottom portion of the beard cross-hatched first before you play around too much with it. Because it's hair, right? So it's going to be a little bit of chaotic. It's going to be a little bit sort of all over the place. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back in here like this. And we're going to make a ton of these series of cross-hatching lines to form shadow. And that's what I'm doing. We're on the bottom of the beard. Bottom of the beard first. Even up on the top of the sideburns a little bit. Inside the ears a little bit. Everywhere you think shadow might hit. Or if you're looking at a reference picture where you see it hitting, that's where you want to try to touch base on, okay? Underneath the chin here, I'm sorry, the lip. The mustache, of course, too. I go down on both sides, opposite, direction, opposite directions like that, and then cross hatch over. Just like that. Okay? And now you can go up the side the beard a little bit and put a few more shapes here and there like this kind of adding in more detail as you go. And you can see now the beard starts to 
kind of fill out more. It doesn't look so 2D. Start to see a little bit, little bit of shadow appearing, a little bit of texture appearing here and there, places. And that's what you want, okay? You want to see that. And like I said at the beginning, this isn't a realistic drawing. This isn't a, you know, like a photographic realistic drawing, but this is our interpretation of this character. And but yet even with that interpretation, we can at least make it look the way we want it by using these little simple techniques. Okay. There we go. Now we got some more cross hatching to do here around the neck. And then of course the cuffs of the shirt. Straight line, I'm going across all of them, opposite direction. Same thing over here. Start at the top, go all the way down. Opposite direction. Now we're not done yet with this. Inside the folds of the fabric, cross hatching there too. Sometimes you can go in one direction and work in that direction for a little bit and then come back and go over the drawing and it kind of can break it up a little bit for you so you don't feel like you're doing too much at once or trying to do too much at once. Like this. So you can actually come back now after you've made a series of these lines all in one direction and go back the opposite way just to try to show a little bit of shadow in here. Like that. Now the, now the uniform itself is pretty dark, but we're not gonna try to worry about cross-hatching the entire thing. That would take forever. You could do that and it would look really cool, but just because of time, we're gonna just do a little bit here and there. And hopefully that'll be enough like this, going up the arm, across the stomach a little bit here. There we go. Now around those buttons, those buttons have to be dealt with too. And what we're gonna do with those buttons here in a second, we're gonna go back over them and just put a little bit, now like I said before, we're not gonna put detail on those buttons, but we're gonna add just a little bit of something in there to help break it up a little bit so it doesn't look just so glaring white in each one, okay? How do we do that? Just a couple of lines here and there. On the outside and the inside of the button. Just two or three lines, three or four lines. All of them towards the bottom of the button, of course, because the shadow, right? There we go. We'll leave this up here at the top, just as it is for the time being with the patch. But here in a second, we're gonna erase, okay? When we erase, we're gonna see everything then really start to pop out. All the places we missed will absolutely just jump out at us. We're gonna do that now, just in a second. So far, I've used the Sharpie. I've used the brush pen. We're gonna come back here in a second using the larger pen and I may have time to work a little bit with this one too, but this is a lot similar to the Sharpie, okay? All right, let's try to erase a little bit now, see what happens. Let's see what appears before us. What should happen is the pencil lines all go away. What we're left with is just all that ink. And when you do this, this is where you really see where you may have left out some stuff. Especially around places that need a lot of detail, like the eyes. I may erase this and realize, oh man, I forgot to cover an entire pupil. Or I forgot to, uh, you know, forgot to put a little eye shine in there or something else, whatever I wanted. But this is where you really see it. If you have a block eraser, that would work a lot better, to be honest. Block erasers are those that look like, um, like little cookies, right? They're real thick. And um, you can take those and just literally go over top of this in a matter of just a few seconds. But the downside of that is 
you can get a little ahead of yourself when you have uh, larger tools you're working with with ink and you can actually if you don't allow this enough time to dry like I'm trying to do for the bottom as I get the top you can smear it really bad luckily with sharpies felt tip markers and those sorts of markers they dry super fast so we're okay the brush pen not so much with that one I have to be a little careful because there's even still areas right now that are a little bit wet and as you remember that's the first that's the first tool I started out with all right now starting to see a little bit more of Garfield appearing before us here let's go down this side of the body a little bit and clean it up after we do this we're going to see where we stand we're going to see what else we need to do and if there's anything else we need to do we'll do it there we go those buttons cleaned up some and of course down along the cuff here there we go the um, the use of these little mechanical pen, um, erasers are really good um, the only thing you have to do is you have to refill them a lot because they run out pretty fast and it can get a little expensive with the refills. You don't need a pencil, uh, I, I keep wanting to call it a pencil, a mechanical eraser like this at all though. All you really, really need is just something like a block eraser, something like that that you can use to get rid of this stuff with. Okay, this is just stuff I've picked up along the way and have enjoyed using from time to time, so i pull them in. All right, here we go. So now you can see with the pencil line gone, there's more detail that's popped out in the drawing. We can see more of the cross hatching that we've done. But I'm going to return now just for a minute. And I'm going to use this really, really dark marker here. And I'm going to go in where the deepest shadow will be. And I'm going to try to pull out some more light and dark using it this way. Okay. You do not need all these tools, though, to follow along. You don't. But the uniform is super dark. Now, see how I'm going over top of the crosshatch now with a larger, thicker brush pen? And this larger, thicker brush pen, I'm using it the same way I would use the smaller one, going with one direction, parallel lines, all the way through. But they're thicker lines, so they stand out a little bit more. I'm going to go back over it again this way. The cuff of the shirt is going to make some lines coming down like this. Cuff of the shirt here. And then up this way. Making more of these little lines that form the breaks of fabric. You can hear how, how thick this really is. I mean, the tip of that is humongous. This is perfect for doing large areas. You don't want to spend all day cross-hatching. We'll go around the base of the beard in some areas too. Down at the base of the beard here. Just around the base. Like that. There we go. And maybe underneath the nose. We just about have it. Now, historical figures, if you want to try to draw some of yourself, I mean, just you can Google search for or use any search engine and pull up some images of. Uh, so maybe some historical photographs of these characters. And if you do, uh, you can pull those up and try. The really good thing about it, most are obviously in black and white, unless you find someone who has went in and colorized one of these uh, old photographs. And seeing a picture in this black and white really helps you to see the, you know, the differences between the light and the dark, where the light kind of hits differently. And it's a really good exercise in 
trying your best to get a little bit of a harness on how to show shadow and light and value in, in a drawing. So you can really go in there and play around and come up with some interesting stuff. But for the purpose of the show today, I think we're pretty good with our cartoon Garfield. Now, I wanted to start the show and say we're going to do cartoon Garfield and then we do the cat, but um, we, uh, we didn't go that route. We stuck for the historic value of it and went straight forward, and this is what we came up with. So uh, always remember to sign your work, right? Always. So no matter what, if you're really pleased, somewhat, somewhat pleased, maybe moderately pleased, no matter what, sign your work. And when you do, do this for me, please. Take a picture of it, and one more time, please send that in to us at PikeTV99 at Gmail. And once you do, please include your name, maybe a little bit about yourself, where you're, if you're a student, where do you go to school, if, or how old you are, or anything you want to include, you can, or maybe just your name. It's up to you. But please send us your work. We want to see it. We want to showcase it here on the show, okay? And also, if you have any questions, you can also reach into the show. If there's any topics you'd like to see us cover, if there's a show you'd like to see us uh, maybe do a certain technique upon anymore, email us. Send us an email. Let us know what you think, and we'll try to accommodate you. We'll do, you know, some shows based on what you all would like to see, okay? So thank you so much for behalf of myself and all the folks here at Pike TV and uh, Mr. Garfield here as well. I'd like to say thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm Christopher Epling. Keep drawing. <laughs>